I want to share with you two verses, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. The Old Testament verse tells us that theology is important because it changes life. I want to read Hosea 4, 6. Hosea says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Verse 1 tells us it's knowledge of God. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea is prophesying 750 to 725 B.C. The glory days of the kingdom of Israel were long past. 200 years earlier, David and Solomon had reigned. But now the kingdom was divided, and the nation was being repeatedly invaded by armies from the Assyrian kingdom. The glory days were gone. These were not happy days for Israel. But internally, internally in the nation, there was trouble as well. And so in this context, Hosea says this, Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. The Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love and no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore, the land mourns. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why it happened. God says, for lack of knowledge, for lack of theology, we could say, the people of Israel were being destroyed. But whose fault was that? Let me continue Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. The word you there in Hebrew, atah, is a singular you. It's not saying you as a nation have rejected knowledge, but rather... God speaking to one particular person, because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. What does that mean? God is pointing out one individual priest as an example of all the priests in Israel and saying, you have rejected knowledge, and that's why this trouble has come on the land. The priests were supposed to teach people the word of God. They were like pastors today. God said to Aaron, the first priest, you are to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that the Lord has spoken to them by Moses. And Malachi 2, 7, the lips of a priest should guard knowledge and people should seek instruction from his mouth. But the priests weren't teaching rightly. The priests had apparently gone to a, a bad seminary. or maybe no seminary at all. And they were leading the people into idolatry, into the worship of Baals and these other false gods. They gave in to every wind of doctrine. They failed to teach true theology. They failed to treat, teach true knowledge of God. And the result, the result of priests failing to teach the people rightly, there is no faithfulness or steadfast love, no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. How does this happen? It's because theology changes life. In fact, what you think about God deep down inside your heart is, I think, the biggest single factor in how you live your life every day. Theology really does change life. Let me give four examples of how theology changes life. First, in individual lives and then in world history. Take one example. What do you think about where life comes from? If you believe that there is a God who created life and who will one day hold each person accountable, then you'll tend to live your life in obedience to his laws and his moral standards. But if you think that life came about by inanimate matter bouncing around randomly for millions of years, that life came about through materialistic evolution with no God involved, then all of a sudden you have no sense that you're accountable to God. And there will be a moral breakdown in your individual life and a moral breakdown in society. 
They cast off all restraint. They break all bounds. Theology changes life. Good theology about where life comes from leads to good decisions. But if you have generation after generation of children taught in the classroom again and again and again that life just came about by materialistic evolution, then that bad theology affects people's moral conduct as well. Or take another example. Deep down inside, where, where do you think you can find true happiness? If you think that from learning true theology, if you think that God is eternally joyful and God is infinitely happy in himself and that God seeks your good and your joy in relationship to him, then you're going to seek to know him better. You're going to find incredible joy in worshiping and serving him. You'll, you'll know that your only hope in, of joy in life is in running to God, not running away from him. You'll know what David says in Psalm 16:11 about God. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. 